Hey folks, I'm here at the Big Rock and Log again for another straightforward abstract algebra proof. We want to prove that if we have two group elements, A and B, and we know that A times B is the identity element E, then we can conclude that A and B are inverses of each other. So A is the inverse of B, and B is the inverse of A. Again, I'll mention that I'm going to say times and talk about this like multiplication, just because that's nice language, but we're not actually talking about normal multiplication. We're just talking about arbitrary operations. This is abstract algebra, so of course, that's what we're doing. In a moment of weakness, you might think, wait a minute, can't we just conclude that A and B are inverses of each other directly by definition once we have this? And not quite, because remember, for A to be an inverse of B, for example, we need to know that AB equals BA equals the identity. Here, we're not given an equality involving both orders of A and B. All we know is that we have these two elements, A and B, and A on the left times B on the right is the identity. But it turns out, of course, this is enough to conclude that A and B are inverses of each other. We've just got to prove it. It's a pretty straightforward result. Definitely give it a try yourself. I'll actually show you a few ways that we could go about this proof. First, let's see the most obvious one. So we want to prove that if AB equals E, then A and B are inverses of each other. Since this is a group, we know that the elements have inverses. So let's say we multiply both sides of this equation by B inverse on the right. If we do that, we'll have that A, B, B inverse equals E, B inverse. Then by the great associativative property, we can combine B with B inverse, and that's going to produce the identity element. So we'll have that A times the identity E equals E times B inverse. And then of course, by definition of the identity element, this is A and this is B inverse. So we would have that A equals B inverse. Now, of course, in order to prove that B equals A inverse, you could just do this same thing again, but multiply both sides of the equation by A inverse on the left. And you can give that a try if you want. But now let me show you another way we could prove this. So here's another slick way we could prove it. Again, we begin with A, B equals E. We want to get some inverses involved here. What do we know about the identity element and how it relates to inverses? Well, by definition of inverse, since A, B equals the identity E, A, B must also equal A times A inverse, because A times A inverse is the identity. But then, by the cancellation law, which we proved in a previous lesson, at the Big Rock actually, and I'll leave a link to that in the description, by the cancellation law, since we have the same group element on the same side, on both sides of the equation, that's A, we can cancel it out. And so we have that B is A inverse. So now, of course, we've proven that A and B are inverses of each other. But again, you could use this same strategy to prove that A is an inverse of B. You would just replace the identity element E with B times, you'd replace it with B inverse times B, and then you could cancel the Bs on the right. I hope there's nobody out here hunting for mathematicians. It kind of sounds like there might be. But let me just show you one other strategy we could use. We could take either of these proofs where we kind of stop at the halfway point, right? Say we stop here. A is the inverse of B. Instead of using the same technique again to get that B is the inverse of A, we could invert both sides of this equation. Since inverses are unique, these equal elements have to have the same inverses. So we could invert both sides of the equation and have that A inverse is equal to B inverse inverse. But then, in a previous lesson, we proved that the inverse of an inverse is the original element. And so we could then conclude that A inverse is equal to B. The inverse of B inverse has to be B. And so then we would have that B is the inverse of A. The proof would be over. Of course, we could do the same thing over there. And I'll leave a link in the description to that lesson where we prove that the inverse of an inverse is the original element. Sorry to say that lesson wasn't at the big rock but it's still a pretty good lesson. So that's how you prove that if two group elements, A and B, compose to produce the identity element, then 
they are inverses of each other. A is the inverse of B, B is the inverse of A. So I hope that helps, and thanks for watching. Got my eyes on a computer screen, trying to work my digits in. I fidget with my lettering, but never with my sentences. I pause and check the clock, and it appears it's 6 a.m. again. Another night wasted, or another day finished, and my mind is steady running in place. I don't want to fall asleep, because I got so much to say. But I don't want to stay awake and keep exhaustion at bay, because I'm presently just...